everyone. Uh, I'm here with Ian, Elise, and Rob, and this is The Depths, and today we're going to talk about Gone Home. Yay. So uh, if you haven't heard about it, it's sort of an adventure game where you uh, play as a woman named Katie who goes back after vacationing in Europe to uh, to ch seemingly check up on her family, right? She, she's, she's, she's coming, she's home. coming, home. She's coming home. She's going home. home. She's going home. She's going home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I think we all liked the game quite a bit. Unless I'm mistaken. We uh, did. Yeah. It was a great effort from the Fulbright Company who released it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dude, but okay. So one of the first things I remember is that uh, I think, Ben, when you, when you finished the game, you were like, we have to go talk about this. Why Absolutely. do we have to talk about this game? Because the way it tells its story, I think, is, is really, really interesting. I think a lot of games... Uh, even adventure games, you know, it's just kind of one story, right? You're just, you're sort of slowly piecing something together or you have a game, maybe like Grand Theft Auto, which is kind of weird comparing Grand Theft Auto and Gone Home. But anyway, you know, you have a main story and then you can kind of have these mini stories and the side missions. But it felt like, you know, I was piecing together these people's lives, right? And they were both connected, but then entirely separate, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. And so, you know, you sort of learn more about your character, but you especially find out about your sister, your, your younger sister. Um, and then you find out about your parents, and they're all very distinct, but they all play and influence each other's stories, which I thought was really, really cool, if that makes well, sense. And, and the yeah. way that the story, like, it's an absolutely, like, game way to have a story be told you know what do you mean like by dark that? souls like you have to find like finding out what the story is the gameplay of this game you know whereas it's, like it's, other games have like cutscenes and stuff it's complete it's like interactive exploration yeah which is good i mean it is it is one of those games uh, i mean it's it's a narrative that sort of makes you want to explore and sort of piece things together on your own. There are certain pieces that you will get. There are certain pieces that you won't get uh, in the story. I think one of the big things is always the, the safe in the basement mm -hmm. that not everyone opens up because uh, unlike all the other sort of... Um, doors that you have to go through you only have to find like two keys while you're going through it uh some of the other combination locks are pretty apparent when you're trying to get to it but it's the safe that doesn't have a natural sort of like here's the combination sort mm -hmm. of deal going into mm -hmm. it and it's not until you sort of you, you almost have to like step into part of the clue that's inside the safe which is the year of kennedy's assassination which is the combination to the safe that is downstairs and that mm -hmm. becomes such a integral part to the father's story as well as uh, Oscar's story. Yeah. I, before we get into the nitty gritty, how I was just going to say that. On, on also, the game itself. Spoilers. Spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. spoilers are here. Um, spoilers. So I think uh, like we can all piece together the, the story essentially starting with it's a it's a dock and stormy night in 1995. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> yeah, you've been, you've been gone Way for to go. a year, you're coming back. And uh, Ryan and I were just talking about this. Like, the, the, it was genius that, uh, like, the setup for the game is really good because, at least for people of, I think, our age, um, like, the 90s are the perfect setting because it feel it has that nostalgic feel. And, like, the, the nice thing is that you're Katie and you've been gone. You haven't ever been to this house, no. but right. it's still filled with all of your stuff. But it's still filled with all of your stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like... So there's that perfect blend of like, okay, I'm the same as this character. I haven't been in this house, but the 90s were my childhood too, you know? Right. So it's like, or I was, you know, whatever age in the 90s. But like, uh, so it's that perfect blend of like mystery and nostalgia mm -hmm. that you're like familiar but unfamiliar. I don't know. It's really... Right. So like, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I was just saying like you are, you are coming into this with fresh eyes as the character would be coming into, right. the, into the game since... Your family has recently moved, and as you find out, like, all your stuff has been boxed up. So you are sort of, like, piecing together, like, what has happened while I've been away. Yeah, so it's, it's your Katie Greenbrier, who it's, it's a dark and stormy night in 1995, June, and you return to your family's new home, uh, which is inherited to them by uh, your father Terry's Uncle Oscar, correct? Yes. And uh, currently residing in this house is your father Terry, your mother Janice, and then your... Uh, younger siblings, Samantha. Up until recently, and your ghosts. younger Up until recently, your younger Lots sister Samantha. And you return home, and no one is there. Right. Yeah. I except think we just need to except for the that. note that's on the door explaining right, right. 
I, sort of like why no one is there. Going forward from this point, I think the assumption will be that if you're watching this, you've played this game. Yes. Because if you haven't played this game, stop right now and go play this game because we're going to ruin it for you. Completely. Because this game is amazing and it should be played by everyone. Okay, so so moving forward, so like, what what do we find out like with the note? What do we, what is what is sort of the the push to the the, the note on the door? Yeah, the note on the door. Do you remember what the note says, Ben? Uh, the note on the door, I don't actually. It says basically it's like from Samantha. It's yeah, it's like Katie, don't go rummaging around to figure out where I am. Oh, don't right. tell mom and dad. Yeah, I've taken some stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, things will be fine. Just you know, mom and dad did not expect you to be home as early yeah. as you were. And that's another that's sort of another key element to the whole thing is that you're actually there a little bit earlier. You're And well you came home with very short notice. Right. And like you And you said, Don't worry about picking me up from the airport. Yeah, yeah. and that was on the answering machine, but no one ever No one so, read it because they're at the counseling camp or whatever. Yeah, they everything is sort of like you've actually jumped in the middle of like all this action that's been going on. So no one is sort of stopping their lives in order to deal with you at the moment like you are in in the middle even though no one's there there's all this other stuff that's happening on the side it's sort of it's sort of really nice because you feel like i don't know it's happened to me a few times where i like come home and you expect people to be there and you expect it to be like a thing like mm-hmm. hey i haven't been here in months like what's up and then like your dad's at work and your sister's uh, you know living living in a different city you know so you're, you get there and there's like literally nobody there and you're like oh yeah okay um <laughs> did you guys notice this definitely happened to me, uh, where the way I felt about the house was was extremely different in the beginning than it was at the end. Um, I was very not I wouldn't say scared of the house, but I didn't I didn't you know I didn't know anything about these characters, anything about you know my family essentially. And going through like it's raining, it's stormy, as mm-hmm. you said, and it's it's kind of scary. And I'm like I was kind of expecting something to jump out. Right. And I, you know, I felt the same way as a kid. You know, when I would visit my aunt and uncle or my grandparents, because I was kind of unfamiliar with this space, I was more nervous or anxious. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the game, once I had kind of like gotten to know these characters and gotten to explore their spaces, it it I wasn't scared anymore. You know, right. like I wasn't nervous. I felt. I felt like I was kind of a part of it. I don't know if you guys went through something similar. Totally. Um, that's uh, that's actually a really good point. Uh, one of the main critiques that people have had about the game is they they felt that the the horror theme, the stormy night. There's talks of ghosts actually happening in the house. There's the hair dye in the tub. Looks yeah, like there's blood. the hair dye in the tub that looks like blood. There's certain things that like happen while you're going through, like the house is the crazy house. Yeah. And so there's oh, yeah. there's allusions to this is a scary house. There are weird things that happen. Like even in the, like I want to say like in the diaries that there were talks of like seeing ghosts or like seeing people mm-hmm. like in the hallways when there shouldn't have been. But like for me, like going using that sort of like heightened sense of like you know fear, that anxiety, really helped out with the story itself because I felt like. It, it's sort of that that case where when you're when you're in love, you you have that heightened sense of anxiety, that heightened sense of like you're sort of nervous, your hands are sort of clammy, right. things are happening, and you don't know how things are going to turn out. And as I must be in love right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, Sorry, go on. It's true. <laughs> uh, but as, as you're as you're going through the story, you know this is this is the story of a first love. Yeah. Like, that's what it comes down to. And as you're reading it and as you're piecing things together, it's almost that it is sort of almost a horror story in a, in a way that you know something bad's going to happen yeah. in it. And you're so scared. Like, I was scared going through it because you're, you're, seeing, you're seeing the notes. You're seeing the, the, the plot points as they're dropping down. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, even though, like, we're together, like, she's so much, so much cooler than I am. And, like, she's hanging out with her friends more, and she really wants to go to college, and, like, I'm going to have to be here. And it's yeah. just, like, this moment where she's it's, like... ROTC. And it's, like, these these plot points as you're going through, and it's, like, oh, oh, God, this is the same thing. But, well, like, we've all go... I mean, I'm assuming we've all gone through the point of, like, your first love is just going to wreck your heart. Well, and also, like, like kind of along with the lines of what you were saying, and, and to that effect, one of my favorite notes was... I can't remember where you find it, but 
it was like a, a thing that said like the lights there's a short in the lights and they intermittently turn on and off and I, yeah. I thought it was a really funny explanation <laughs> for like this is why the house looks so scary because the wiring sucks but like um sort of along the lines of what both of you are saying is like my experience of the game was because i knew ahead of time that there wasn't any supernatural stuff so i wasn't ever like scared right um i somebody ryan or somebody told me that i guess but like um uh so i wasn't ever scared but like my my fear of the house transferred over to oh shit am i gonna find this this girl dead in the yeah. attic because she killed herself oh, like and like especially with all the like the young like high school age uh gay suicide like gay kids killing themselves right now like that's very like in you know my it's mind i guess and, yeah. and, and like and i was like oh my god is this you know going to be that and then you know happy ending is a nice my, it's, i it's, like the but, twist but but once again like the is like as someone's pointed out it's like it's not necessarily the most it's it's a happy ending for the circumstance, but right. like going mm-hmm. into it, like she's still in high school. She's well, and it's run still shitty, and like, like her parents don't accept her, and like yeah, exactly. she's a high schooler, so you there's a good chance this relationship's not going to work out. Right, it's <laughs> like, like you feel better about it than like her hanging from the rafters. Right, but but then again, like she also wrote on the door, "Don't come looking." I right. already ran away. Right, so you don't know why she ran away or the reasons well, behind it. And like and. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say my experience with the house because I took a different take on it than Rob's perception of it resembling love. Mine, but if you guys are... Go for it. No, no, no. Say <laughs> I, it. Uh, say no, it. Say it. Go for say it. it. Say it, Elise. I, I, uh, playing it, I, I was totally terrified playing it until I reached probably 75% in and realized this isn't scary. Um, and I think that is representative of the fear of the unknown. And especially when it comes to Samantha being homosexual and her parents like not accepting it and essentially living in denial of it it's people fearing what they don't know but then once things come to the light of day and you are exposed to them and you're fully aware of them you no longer have that fear and I think that was kind of going through the house what we're meant to experience sort of or you still have the fear but you have to take an action to like deal with it yeah too because like and that's that's in it too is like a fear of the future like Sam's always talking about like what's going to happen after high school. Right, and, right. and, like, that's one of the things, like, kind of what you were saying about, like, the horror elements and stuff. And, like, at f- for a second I was like, is this exploitative that they're, like, making us afraid? And, like, they're obviously doing it on purpose. But, like, to me, since the whole game is... It's almost a first-person narrative told through Sam's perspective. And, like, since that, and she's a high school student, like, I remember when I was a kid, I was all about, like oh, maybe there's, like, these other stuff. There's got to be more to life than this, you know? And I was living in a small town. I had nothing to do. So we were always, like... Beating the beast. Well, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. got to be more than this provincial yeah. life. Yes. And, like, uh, exactly. so I I totally bought that these, I don't know, 17, 16-year-old yeah. girls would be, like, ghost hunting and, like, oh, yeah. you know, and I don't yeah. know. I just think it's... Ben, what about Ben, you? Yeah, I... Two things. You guys have made me think of so many things. But I, I viewed the, the house as as a place that that people desperately wanted to escape, right? Like, And I think that was true of, of every character in the story. Huh. And there's a lot to say with that, right? So I think Samantha, who discovers that she's homosexual, right? She she kind of like, you don't, you don't really see her presence in the house at all, other than the places that she kind of burrows away. Oh yeah. And like the digger and the, the deeper and deeper you dig into the house, you, find out more about her like it's only like in the 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 nooks and crannies at the house that you really get a full picture of who samantha is and you sort of get the idea that you know that's kind of like emblematic of the the stuff she's going through herself right like she doesn't feel like she can expose this to anyone else like she can't like this house is not a welcoming place for her this is a house where there are certain expectations on how you should behave but then at the very end when she runs away with her lover like she's finally free of it. Like yeah. suddenly, like she doesn't have to tuck herself into these nooks and crannies, and finally it's she's free. It's kind of funny. Like as you were saying that, like I kind of thought like the house kind of is Samantha because yeah. like she's got the outward appearance, and yep. then all of her secrets are hidden in crannies in in herself. Yep, well, like, exactly. In the locker. Wait, and I, so. sorry, nope. Go ahead. Oh no, I, I, what you were saying about how it's almost as if nobody wants to be there, but yes. they are. It's strange because Oscar left that house to Terry in his will. Right. But given the implications about Terry's relationship with Oscar, it's very strange that he would move his family into Oscar's house. 
Yeah. You know? That's why, I mean, I think the Oscar story, and we'll get into it, I'm sure, but, like, I think it's intentionally left nebulous because, like, yeah, there's a lot of evidence for one thing. Um, I don't know if it's conclusive, but I, I hope it's I mean, not conclusive. No, you know? I, I, I mean, I, I going back to sort of, like, everyone's sort of has like a space like everyone like even even the parents i feel like have their own spaces and like i felt like even you know even where was though, the wife's space where was the mom's like space? her space was sort of her the job. living room the there was the of. bedroom a little bit yeah to me it was her job like to and, me her and her, it was also she was trying to not be in this house as much there was possible. also like wasn't there like a like a like a like a Hot house, hot house or something of, like that. Like sanitarium. A greenhouse? Yeah, a greenhouse. Yeah, there was a greenhouse. Yeah, yeah there was a but green... the father, the dad was writing in there. He was there. writing was like in there. office. Right. But it's... we should get into that when we talk about Oscar and right. Terry. Too. But like a lot of their stuff didn't necessarily come together. Like a lot of, like you would pick up things here and there. It was yeah. like, okay, this is the dad's room. This is like the mom section. Like, Well, that's one of the things like I love about this game. And like, the to me, like good good art i guess blah 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 like like the movie upstream color favorite mm-hmm. movie but like you can like you kind of take from it what you want to take from Completely. it you know and like when i was in the dad's study uh and i found the bottle of whiskey above the thing i was like oh he's an alcoholic right you know immediately um yeah exactly and I, like you take whatever you want from it you know yeah, I, you keep seeing the whiskey like over and over the place and that's but then enough. you find like then you find like in in oscar's uh, safe down there, like there's like syringes and like a rubber thing. So I'm thinking maybe he's like a junkie too or something. And then like in the back room by the logs that like doesn't the light doesn't even turn on. Right. You find like a thing on the ground that's from like the 20s from like the previous previous owners. Right. That's like nothing but whiskey orders. And it's like the governor loves booze and he's happy with how it goes and mm-hmm. whatever. I um, I think one of my favorite things about Gone Home is it does a pretty amazing job of showing like how intimate the space you call home is and that's like both incredibly good and incredibly bad like these walls could talk yeah exactly and like you know i think for the the father he's a writer and he gets a publisher for this book about (laughs) it it's kind of like a sci-fi take on the jfk assassination right and essentially um the book doesn't do well and he writes another one and it doesn't do well and like this this house is kind of like a a constant reminder of his like professional failure because you find these boxes and Mm -hmm. boxes and boxes of unsold books and that letter that like the guy's like hey Mm -hmm. quit embellishing your stereo reviews nobody cares about your childhood right doesn't he doesn't he get like a letter from his father that's like you can do better his father and you see like in post-it notes like you can do better uh, i mean there's that also there's a uh, that goes back to the the let's, implication. Like, let's let's, let's just take on in. the Oscar story because yeah, I think that that hinges on everything. Yeah, exactly. So, um, <laughs> I mean, part of the part of the letter that he does get from his father is, you know, I'm glad I'm glad you're turning this into something good. Like that's the only good thing he has to mm. say with his book. So, I didn't read it like is that funny. he only, he's like. This book, I can I can completely see. You know, you go into the tropes, the genres. Like it's very it's very lazy. The writing is you know, you know, not all that great. But at least you're doing something good, good. with something that happened to you. Yeah. yeah. And well, the, and he says like you should use that. You should not be afraid. To right. Start. Exactly. That's okay. Go for it. Uh, I just wanted to explain the Oscar story because I feel like we're talking about it a lot. And, <laughs> yeah. and okay, go for it. I, I, the implication is um, that. Terry Greenbrier, who is the father of Samantha, uh, th- around Thanksgiving, around the uh, t- uh, JFK assassination, uh, the implication is that he was uh, sexually assaulted or abused by his uncle Oscar. And there are lots of things that show maybe then that he had a break in his relationship with Oscar, like the the height wall chart. That's right next yeah, to the age safe. 12, age right 12 there. is the last, you know, thing. And it is that year. And then in, in the letter that you find in the safe, he says... Um, what does it say? Like, because uh, because Oscar had uh, opened a soda fountain and all the kids were going to the to the pharmacy and then he suddenly quits the pharmacy and gives it to his assistant and then like in the years since transgression I have sought no absolution only bare forgiveness in good faith I have uh, removed myself from all temptation, uh, which is a letter to his sister that was returned to sender and it says in the beginning like I write what's probably my last appeal letter that'll go unanswered yeah like uh. yeah and it 
It didn't hit me. When it didn't I, hit I was me right away. It, I mean, it was it was something, especially with the books going into it. Like he obviously he's writing the books about this man who goes back in time and tries to save JFK. And on the wall, on his on his, like the first study that you come to says, "Is JFK really JFK?" Or if like is JFK, what if JFK wasn't JFK or something like that? Yeah. And so the implication is okay. Who's he going back in time to save? And so, like, the first two books that he writes is Man Goes Back in Time, Tries to Save JFK. The and then third the last book one is to save himself. To save himself. And that's the whole thing. Like, he's trying to go back to this point in his life where he wants to, he wants to stop whatever this terrible thing that's happening to him because he sees that as sort of, like, the repercussions, like, of why he's not having a good relationship with his wife, how his career is failing, career is failing, like how he keeps on like writing these books that are just you know not going anywhere. Well, I, my I, mind just got blown. Sorry. No, I I actually you got a little pick brain. Up brain on I just realized stuff. something. But but another one of my favorite things about Gone Home is I think it would have been really easy, and I think there have been a lot of stories done like this where it was sort of like the you know. Things aren't appear are aren't what they appear on the surface, or you know, everyone has secrets, kind of a thing. And I, I think that story has been done and done and done. But I think Gone Home goes way, 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 way farther, right? Because ultimately, the dad, the, like he doesn't fix everything, right? Like he the, he still has this mess of a marriage to deal with. Um, it seems he, like he's having a little bit of trouble connecting to his daughters. Exactly. Too. Like <laughs> like not everything is perfect, but you you, it's not hopeless, right? So he. There's this this publisher that reaches out to him, and they they sort of take these like kitschy like cliche sci-fi books, and they sell them to a very specific audience right. that really eats that stuff up. Made me a little and, sad though. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of sad too. But I get I get right. No, right. That but, someone's someone's appreciating. Yeah, it. and he you can you can sort of see that revitalizes him a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you know his marriage is failing. But they're going to counseling, right? It's right. You're not, it's not it's no guarantee that everything is going to work out, but it's not hopeless, and I mm-hmm. think that that made ultimately the story a lot more interesting to me. Well, and also like uh, I mean, we've all had moments where you realize that your parents aren't or are fallible, aren't infallible, you know, and then you realize they're flawed and stuff. And like I just like connected like a bunch of dots in my head while you guys were talking, and like in this. The last, the third book that he, that the dad writes, uh-huh. is called *The Accidental Human*, and and in this letter, Oscar says like, "I just want to be treated as human again and breathe in the air of human spirit once more." And like he mentions not feeling like a human a bunch of times, so that's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. And then like, um, how the dad like, sort of like reasons for the way that people behave, like maybe the reason that the dad is so against, because it seemed like the dad was more against. Uh, Samantha being gay than 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 the mom. I don't know. Maybe but, I'm reading into that. But like, uh, because if if it's true that he was assaulted as a child, right. like, and Oscar was gay, maybe you know. He has a stigma. He has a stigma against that, you know. 